All right, everyone, welcome to TGIF. Thank God I'm a foodie, a show hosted by our food reporter and LAX chef, Brian D. On TGIF, you can bet your burgers. We will be featuring the best of the best of LA's minority-owned and operated eateries. That's restaurants, food trucks, cooking schools, food festivals, and much, much more. I promise you will not want to miss the Asian, Middle Eastern, American, Latin, and soul food dishes that we will be showing on the show. So sit back and enjoy each and every bite from breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner, and dessert. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Brian. I'm a chef by trade, and in my 12 years of eating and cooking throughout Southern California, I've developed a palate and an expertise that I want to share with you guys. I've worked for some of the best chefs here in LA. James Beard award-winning chef, Suzanne Going, to the world-renowned Gordon Ramsay, to Wolfgang Puck at Spago Beverly Hills. When it comes to food, it's more than a passion for me. It's almost biblical. It's, it's almost a religion. And that's why I wake up every day and say, thank God I'm a foodie. Today we're going to talk to the team from Maestro, a high-end Mexican restaurant here in Pasadena. We're going to talk to Sergio, who's one of the owners, and Elena, who's the chef. At Maestro, they're taking Mexican food beyond the typical food truck and highlighting the cultural heritage that their culinary cuisine has to offer. We're going to talk about their passion for the food industry and how it is important to them and how it continues to play an important part in how the restaurant evolves. We're going to talk about the vegan movement and how their menu is adaptable to people with special dietary needs. Stay tuned to the end for a special offer from TNE Magazine, and thank God I'm a foodie. Uh, so today, Sergio, just give me a rundown of kind of how you got started in the business, um, what motivated you to open your own restaurant. You know, the restaurant business is tough. It's 50% fill rate. What sets you guys apart, um, and how you wanted to set yourself apart with your restaurant? I mean, what motivated me was just being able to like just do something for myself, one, and really showcase to the people that brought me up, which was my mom and my sister. Okay. So it was one of those things where my sister was more of a school brat. I wanted to do something for myself and food was always something really close. My mom was always working, but when she did, she made a lot of like comfort food, but it all just started off with a bunch of different or like friends going out to like, like Mexico and just going, going to all these beautiful restaurants in Mexico and then you come out to the States and that gets lost and people just know like Mexican food as tacos and burritos, chips and salsa, rice and beans. There's nothing more to the culture. Same thing with like Indian food, any ethnic food period, just specific plates, ingredients and everything gets lost. And we just really want to represent that and showcase that and show people that there's more to the food, more to the culture, more to the spirits and do it our way. Try to find the best product out there. Okay. And at the same time, have fun with it, you know? For sure. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're called Maestro. Maestro, we wanted something where it represents the spirits. Okay. Which the head distiller is um, at a sign of respect. It's kind of like the doctor, you know, you earn the right for, for that title. Um, so it's Maestro, Maestro is the head distiller and Maestro Mezcalero. But now it has a double meaning. The fact that we're educating people um on what the food the culture the spirits and taking people with the journey when they come here and that's what we really want we want people to feel homey when they come here we want to uh, you know it's cheers everybody knows your name type Absolutely. of thing you know yeah. Elena, um just tell me a little bit about how you got started in the business and what you know how you were drawn to to this concept and kind of just a little bit of, a little bit of your background as well um well, I've been doing this for 12 years and started off actually about to start law school and just, you know, just the way that life goes, you just choose the things that are best for you. Um, me choosing happiness over money, financial, like success or anything like that. Entering this business, I always say it's not the most lucrative, it's not something that gives you more money. It's something definitely that you have to do because you love doing it. Um, and the love that I have for it is all of the memories I've had growing up with like my grandmother, my great grandparents, my mom, everybody who just sits around the table and you sit at a table for four hours and you don't even know time goes by because all you're doing is talking about each other and actually like connecting with one another, you know, no phones, no nothing. It doesn't matter when you're at home, especially in Mexico, especially anywhere where you feel the people that love you the most are there. You just feel like everything else is, doesn't matter. 
So in order, uh, in, instead of like paper chasing and always trying to keep up with the Joneses, I decided to do something that was gonna always make me happy, which always did, which was when grandmother would come and all we would do is like eat breakfast and talk about what we'd eat for lunch and dinner. <laughs> My culture is from uh, the state of Nayarit, and they're a very coastal town, you know. Um, a lot of people don't know about Nayarit, but we have a lot of ingredients that are super fresh, super healthy, and super um, just authentic in our own right, you know. There's so many different parts of Mexico that you want to touch base on. For sure. And I learned French technique, technically, but because of the way I grew up, it was always Mexico. And trying to find your identity as a chef in a world full of chefs. Um, there's so many people that went to culinary school and they still don't know what their identity is because they're not in the business. Uh, trying time and time again different techniques and different styles, you know, you kind of come back to home. I got involved with these guys in not so long ago and it was through a friend of mine who she connected the both of us or the four of us, yeah. you know, and the the general consensus was that we all grew up pretty similar being first, second generation Mexicans living in California, you know, and trying to have the same kind of vision of like teaching and showing what actually our culture represents, which is unity, family, and warmth, you know, and Mexican food is so much more than what people give us. The, 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 the dignity to have. Um, we're trying to take that back and kind of culturally evolve people and the fact that this community has been so welcoming in the sense of understanding what our point is and actually cheering us on. It's so beautiful to see with so much going on in the world and so much you know animosity towards each other. It's really beautiful to see that our point is being seen and we're having such a great time doing it as well. well. I just want to thank everybody that joined us in the podcast and took the time to listen to what we're actually doing. Um, let us take you to a journey um, and hopefully come see what Elena's doing. Uh, look us up on Yelp Reservations at Maestro uh, Pasadena, uh, 110 East Union. Uh, tell me what, what do you guys have going on in the restaurant? Uh, you guys have a new happy hour thing you're rolling out? What do you guys have? Yeah, so we're, we're just uh, really starting off, uh, and then I came up with a great happy hour menu um, where you have down to like something so simple as a crunchy, a cr a crunchy potato with nopales, a little bit of salsa tomatillo, the chile de arbol and nice. the handmade tortillas. Um, it's so, so simple, but yet so delicious. Vegetarian or not, we can make them vegan, um, and, and you're just going to really fall in love with them. You don't miss the meat whatsoever. And the funny thing is that like everybody knows what tacos de papa are. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Of course. But what comes with tacos de papa is a whole lot of oil and a whole lot of grease. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing a really like crunchy greased up taco, we did the um, we did potatoes that Yukon gold potatoes. Okay. We cooked them and we let them um, Get, go through this process of getting a nice starch on the outside and then we just drop in the fryer till they get crispy, literally like two seconds. Um, and they come up, they get dried and salt and then just the handmade tortilla is what is the soft part about okay. it. We don't actually fry the whole thing together okay. and we finish it off with a really nice ensalada de nopal which is cactus. just uh, cactus, cactus cast salad. But the difference between my cactus salad and everybody else's is that I don't actually cook my cactus. Oh, okay. I don't like the I don't like the color change from when you put it in boiling water. And not only that, but it releases a lot of like um, I call it saliva. Yeah, it, <laughs> so, it does get a little yeah, like, yeah. like, like ochre yeah. almost. Yeah. Like it's like, like, like runny and, and yeah. sticky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we just we do a salt cure on them, okay. and it keeps the color and it cooks it through, and it also gives it a lot of flavor throughout nice. as well. So um, it's really refreshing, and like you said, everybody's been loving them, and I'm like I'm so glad because again, what we were saying in the beginning, we're not trying to change things up. We're just trying to make them something that we would want to go out and eat. So reserve your table today at Yelp. Uh, you can find us at Maestro Pasadena on Instagram and also maestropasadena.com. You can find all of the pictures and all of our specials there as well. 
Uh, we just want to show you guys what real Mexican food could actually be and have fun in the process as well. So today I want to talk a little bit about veganism. I, I think that vegans is kind of the new thing here, going to be the new trend here in LA. So what, 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 do you guys have any vegan items on your menu or is there certain things that you can, you can change up? Like give me a little bit of rundown how you can kind of cater to, how to cater to that clientele. Elena, she actually modified a lot of the dishes that traditionally are cooked with maybe like a chicken broth or, 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 or some sort of animal byproduct or something. Uh, she modified a lot of the dishes to be able to cater to a uh, vegetarian, a vegan, and celiac, uh, dairy free, anything, you know. Especially this day and age, everybody has some sort of allergy, <laughs> some sort <laughs> of, like, it's... It, it, gluten, yeah. gluten free, and the great thing about Mexican food is that we don't actually use gluten in our food. We use masa, we use flour, we don't use flour, we use masa, we use corn, we use just tomatoes, anything that's fresh, we use it and we eat it. And I think that's why people live longer in small towns because they get everything Proce fresh. There's no processed foods. Exactly, there's no I processed agree. foods. I so agree. why not use that? We have organic, like organic um, corn that is used to make our masa for our tortillas. And we use our tortillas for almost everything, especially during brunch. At brunch, um, we have Items like uh, frijoladas, those are kind of things that we grew up eating as kids. Uh, it's filled with uh, chorizo and papas, some cheese. But of course, you could always take those items off, which are what vegans here in California has had to adapt to. Because not every restaurant caters to vegans specifically. But the good thing about what we're doing is that most of my menu and the things that we that we create are meant to be duo purpose. I could just give you guys potatoes and zucchini and saute that and put it inside this wonderful shell, which is our organic tortilla, and do the organic black bean sauce that is made with no lard, which typically frijoles in the morning, you cook up your, um, refry. your yeah, you refry them in lard. And instead I just use your basic sunflower, no, I'm sorry, corn oil and do a base of like tomatoes, chilies, onions, garlic. And there's a certain technique that, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you guys everything because I mean, I need you guys to come in and try it yourself. <laughs> but being from Mexico and having family that has cooked for us forever, our moms, our grandmas, they give you these little tips that when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I'm never gonna use this. But now as an adult and as this being my profession, I tend to go back in my memory and be like, oh, I know how I have to do this without actually using manteca or using anything else to alter the flavor to make it that much better or use the typical North Suiza like everybody uses North Suiza for everything in Mexican cooking and instead we use um, our organic free-range Mary's chicken broth that we make every day to make our enchiladas um, that in and of itself the guajillo sauce is made with just garlic, onions, and just a couple of other things. Not the biggest thing in the world, but the thing is that we have the recipe, we have a base to it. I don't add any chicken stock to that. So when you come in and you want to eat an enchilada and you're a vegan, I could give you a vegetable enchilada with no bad feelings of giving you something that you don't want to eat or you're choosing not to eat. Um, same thing with the chilaquiles. I don't use chicken broth in that. I use just your basic tomato, just give it a lot of love and you yeah, without je it, without it like actually jeopardizing the actual true flavor of it and affecting where somebody that does eat and, and is used to eating it with the chicken broth or so forth in it isn't going to be like wait this tastes different exactly. you know it still has to taste authentic it's still it's still there the way she does things but we can accommodate to everybody. We want everybody just to really embrace it and cater to everybody. We don't want to exclude anybody. I remember I had one instance of my thing and the chef's kind of, my chef at the time, he said, these people are coming in to pay all this money and the vegan or the vegetarians, the, those special diet people are the most important people at the table because if there's a party of eight and because they know they have a special menu, they're gonna, the, the rest of the group is going to cater to them. So if they're not happy, you're going to lose that whole group. So it was, that always kind of stuck in my head that, hey, you got to take care of the people with special needs and special diets because they're the ones that if they're not happy and they don't want to come back, that group is not going to come back, at least 
as, as it is in that particular site. So I think that that is very cool that you guys are doing that you, the food that you can do can be tailored to to those special requests and those, and those special I call them special needs, but sometimes sometimes they are special needs because people like a celiac. You mentioned that you know people can't eat dairy and, and they'll go to the hospital if they do. So it, yeah, the, the gluten you know so they thank you. I knew it was gluten. I, I don't want to say that, but you know, it is great that you guys can that you guys can tailor that without too much of a problem because a lot of chefs don't want to do that either. So I think that's that's very a good thing that you guys are, are willing to yeah. to cater to those kind of, those. Or some people, people just say dietary. like, oh yeah. Some people actually like tell you like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have any animal byproduct, and it really does. Yeah, and you know. Especially vegans, they're put in uh, put in a situation that eat something and vegetarians and yeah. and you know it's it's hard to go somewhere and sometimes give something and not give something that somebody can't have, mm -hmm. but some people just don't care, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, when I was growing up, I tried to be a vegetarian and it did not work out very well. My mom was like. Si, sí, cómetelo, está bien, no, no tiene caldo de pollo. And then you see her, like, big old thing of chicken stock in the thing, and you're like, wait, what is this chicken stock for? She's like, oh, it's for the rice, and it's like, wait. Yeah. She's like, oh, no te hace daño, which means, like, it's not going to hurt you, girl, just eat it. <laughs> so I understand what it's like to not get the wishes and the desires that you want for yourself to be um, carried through. So when you decide to be a vegan or a vegetarian or anything in between, it is a decision, a conscious decision you make as an adult. And at the restaurant, we take that very seriously. I mean, we some understand. of our staff are vegetarian. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of our staff is vegetarian. So Vaughn's very happy we made yeah. tacos de papa because now he could eat every day at the restaurant without having to go for sure skateboard somewhere to go get it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. That, no, that's we're gonna take a quick break from a word for our sponsor. We'll be right back. This episode of TGIF, Thank God I'm a Foodie, is brought to you by As At Play. As At Play is a social media marketing company that's made up of a team of performance-based marketers that have innovated the world of digital growth marketing since 2006. They develop compelling content to assist the growth of your business, your audience, leads, and sales. If you're on Facebook, you need to contact this wonderful company because they will help take your brand to new heights. You can go to their website at ads at play.com or give them a call at 626-624-4243. Just tell them t and &E, Thank God I'm a Foodie sent you. Welcome back everybody to Thank God I'm a Foodie. Today we are in Old Town Pasadena at Maestro's where Sergio and Chef Eliana invited us back to taste their amazing food after we talked about it in our sit-down meeting. Today is one of those days that I'm super excited that I'm a foodie, so stay tuned. Today, today we are here with Nicole Stewart, the editor-in-chief of t &E Magazine, who happens to be a vegan, so she will be able to give us a unique perspective on some of the foods that we are going to be tasting today. So Nicole, are you as excited to be here today as I am? Absolutely. As a vegan woman, you know how hard it is to find food that's authentic to people's culture and still have those magically delicious tastes that comes with those people who eat meat. So I'm excited to speak on behalf of all the vegans in the world. Definitely. Let's dig in. Yeah. Hello. Good, good afternoon. This is the Iramasa, vegetarian completely, with a little bit of chili serrano. The fish of the day, the day is uh, uh, gelotea. And also with a little bit of uh, peaches and a uh, crostini also, uh, organic, uh, tostada. We made everything here. And also our chili. Enjoy. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Enjoy. Daniel. This is why I'm here. Can't wait to try this. Get a little bit of everything on the plate. Excuse me while I chew. Very good. Fish is super fresh, definitely sushi grade. That serrano gives it a nice little heat. Uh, the cucumber gives it that nice cool, it, it, call, it about helps balance out the serrano a little bit. And the pear gives it a little bit of sweetness. And the, fri and the, the fried uh, chip is, is amazing. It does give a little bit of that smoky flavor that totally enhances the whole dish. So on a scale of one to 10, I would definitely give this a 10. And for a price point of $14, it's definitely worth it. You guys will not, you guys will not be disappointed. We also have a uh, cheated pie. 
uh, chili killers for you guys. Uh, salsa roja, a little pico de gallo, a little Oaxacan cheese, and a fried egg. And fried egg melts in, tastes really good. And house made corn tortilla chips with a little crema. All right, guys, I'm actually super excited about this one. Growing up where I come from in Colorado, in California, I'm a huge fan of chili aquiles. This one looks amazing. We got house made salsa roja, breakfast radishes, fresh Mexican crema, fresh Mexican cheese, and a sunny side up egg. Normally, I'm not a big fan of sunny side up eggs, but I'm gonna give it a try and let you guys know what I think. It's very good. Uh, chips are nice and crunchy. The funny thing about chili aquiles is sometimes if they sit for a few minutes, they, they the chips don't get as crunchy, and that's my favorite part is having the crunchy chips, but the chips are nice and crunchy. And I'm not gonna lie, even with the sunny side egg, it is very good. And I love Mexican crema and Mexican cheese. So definitely, definitely a, uh, a no lose situation on this one as well. On a scale of one to 10, I would give this one a nine and a half only because of my egg preference. But if you love running sunny side eggs, it's definitely a 10. And at a price point of $13, this is almost a meal in itself. It's great. For this one, we're gonna have my editor in chief try the vegan dish for her unique perspective of being a vegan. One of those weird people that like to eat my food from the middle. <laughs> this is fantastic. You have to try this. I will, definitely. Before I can talk, thumbs up. Nicole's right, this dish is amazing. Um, the nopales and the house and the fresh made corn tortillas and the avocado and the beans are phenomenal. Um, this dish was actually made made vegan by request, so normally it is not vegan, but they are happy to do it. Um, definitely give it a 10 out of 10, and for a price point of $12, I think this is a no-lose as well. I give it a 20 out of 10. For me, as a vegan woman, it was packed with flavor. From the first bite, I could taste all the ingredients. I, I loved it. I was happy. Definitely. Again, I want to thank Sergio and Elena from my nice little restaurant for coming down to talk with me today. Guys, tell me where they can find you uh, on social media or the address, contact information for you guys. Well, we're located at uh, 110 East Union uh, in Pasadena. And uh, our website is maestropasadena.com. Same thing with our Instagram, it's maestropasadena. You'll be able to find a lot of the beautiful creations that Elena has done. Uh, drinks, cocktails, and you can kind of see some of the settings and ambiance that we try to put out, you know. Um, through uh, through that, so yeah, definitely maestropasadena.com and uh, maestropasadena on Instagram as well. Sergio and Elena, from the bottom of their hearts, since they're the most awesome people in the world, they want to give a, one lucky listener and one lucky guest a one hundred dollar gift card to the restaurant to come and try the amazing food that they have and to get the full maestro experience from their restaurant. All you have to do is sign up for the subscription to the magazine at TNE and put in my promo code TGIF and then we will announce the winner live on our next podcast. Stay tuned every Friday at noon for TGIF. Thank God it's thank God I'm a foodie. Thank you so much for listening today. If you would like to dive in deeper into this conversation, we would love for you to check out the show notes for this episode to see what were some of the most important takeaways from this conversation. You can find these show notes at read tnemag.com and if you want to continue to grow even more make sure you subscribe to tne magazine using promo code edith18 to get 30 percent off of your subscription because that is where we give you a lot of the tools to expand your personal growth especially into this new year and you can get a chance to win some of the cool blink fitness wear that was mentioned in today's episode but you can only win those outfits guys if you subscribe using the promo code EDIF18. Also, if you enjoyed this week's episode, please take a minute to go to iTunes and leave a review so we can help other minorities like yourself build their own successful brand. So until next week, guys, we are one land, one society, one as a people, united as one. TNE Inspired.